Before sunrise, Burn Dairy and Deli is preparing to fuel your day with hot coffee, donuts, muffins, breakfast sandwiches, and other morning staples. For lunch, grab a giant deli sandwich made the way you like it. Pizza, wings, wraps, or a fresh salad. Plus, something to wash it down. Then pick up dinner or a sweet treat and other pantry essentials. Now you can get your Burn Dairy and Deli favorites delivered with DoorDash. All day, every day, you can count on Burn Dairy and Deli. It's all good. Hi, this is Bob Costas, and you're listening to the ML Sports Platter. ML Sports Platter, back with you, brought to you by Bryant and Stratton College of Syracuse, Liverpool Physical Therapy, Heather Saxton of Hunt Real Estate, and our terrific friends at Stanley Law Offices. Together, they'll work to get you the maximum award. Log on to StanleyLawOffices.com for more. Stanley Law Offices, a proud ML Sports Platter title sponsor. Let's get to it. My goodness. We can't be surprised. Scott Petoniak, the longtime Yankees columnist and insider. You can get all of his books where books are sold, uh, nearby bookstores, Amazon.com, etc. Uh, make sure you go do that. He's on Twitter, at Scott Petoniak. His work now can be found in the Rochester Business Journal. Go check it out. He's been doing it for a long time, man, covering Orange Sports and the Bills and you name it, formerly of the Democrat and Chronicle, a TV contributor, volunteer, Honored columnist, uh, nationally a storyteller, best-selling author. Let's bring him in to break down another October disaster and another season disaster for the New York Yankees. Scott, welcome in, buddy. How are you? I'm doing fine, Mike. Thanks for having me. Well, here we are. I mean, no, no surprise, right? I mean, we said it in the beginning of the season. Run it back. Put in the put the movie right back in. Hit play. You'll rewatch it for the what feels like the 400th time, and the Yankees collapse again in October. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like you say, it's, it's not a surprise. We talked about that this team was built for the regular season, although I'm beginning to wonder if they're even built for the regular season, Mike. Um, I mean, they eked into the playoffs, let's be honest here. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's an extremely flawed team and organization. Um, you know, and, uh, um, you know, I, I put I put the blame on uh, – where it belongs on the ownership and on on the on your general manager, you know Brian Cashman. I just they put this team together. It's a poorly constructed team, um, and it it's on, it's on the downturn. Um, this is uh, there's a massive amount of work to be done in this off season, um, you know, to 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 right things if if, they, if it can be done quickly. I can't see it, um, you know, and. Uh, uh, I, I got a kick out of it, you know, Aaron Boone, who, you know, he'll be the, he'll be one of the sacrificial lambs or could be, um, you know, saying that the, the league has closed the gap on us. Absurd. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Absurd. That's, that's saying you're on top. That's right. Like teams are coming. No, you haven't won. Uh, you know, so, I mean, why do you make a comment like that? And again, I don't, I don't want to like, you know, I mean, the, the problems go much deeper than Aaron Boone. He certainly is, it contributes to them, but. He's just a conduit, and you know we know in this this day and age that you know managers um, you know react um, uh, to orders. They're middle management now. They they you know the decisions are made by Cashman, who fancies himself this little Napoleon, fancies himself as a manager, and the analytics department, and um, you know this this whole boom or bust or whatever they're whatever whoever's doing their analytics um, is not doing a very good job. Um, but they're, you know, you know, again, it, it's disappointing. And I think what's more disappointing than what, you know, the, what happened, you know, in, in the wild card game there is that this team's trending down and it's hard to believe Mike just, you know, it wasn't all that long ago. We're talking about, you know, the baby boomers, right? Here, right? The, the, you know, the, this is the, you know, the new generation, right? There's the new core that was found. It really wasn't all that long ago. I know. Just, wow. Four wow. years ago. This, and, and since then, yeah. they've gone back so far. I mean, yeah. it's it's unbelievable. The, the baby bombers, the next crew, the next, this group. And that's where I was going to go yeah. next is there. there's so many things you mentioned it already that need to be done. Um, but this group that was supposed to be 
the next in line to do special things. I'm not saying they were going to do what Jeter's Yankees did, but you know, this Sanchez, right. Glaber, Aaron Judge, Luis Severino, you know, that kind of group. I'm not sure I feel really confident about any of these guys short or long term, Scott. I I know Judge had a great year this year. I know I know he was healthy. But if they give him a monster contract, that's gonna end up killing him in the end too. I just don't know about this group uh at this point, other than I haven't seen it. I haven't seen anything. I don't see heart, I don't see hustle, I don't see them in the clutch, I don't see anything. Yeah. No, no, you're absolutely right. And and you know, I, like I think Judge is a is a is a really really good player, and when he when he's healthy, he's you know he's he's a difference maker. There's no question about it. But they they as you've mentioned, like I mean, do you want to get saddled, and you're going to have to pay and pay long probably for him? Do you want to get saddled with that, or are you going to do a uh, a gutsy, you know, probably unpopular thing like the Red Sox did with Mookie Betts? And say, like, well, you know, we got some other people here, and we're going to go in this direction. And, yeah, we're going to take a real hit here because this is the guy who could have been, you know, right in the lineage, right, of Williams, Yastrzemski, and, you know, and and Ortiz or whatever. You know, it could be a a forever Red Sox. Well, no, we're we're looking, you know, what's best for the long term here. And and so they remade things. So, um, and again, I go, you know, Mike, the thing that, bothers me the most is um, they can do all these moves and so forth, but the man making the moves has a terrible track record as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, I've, I've been on Cashman's case forever. Um, I mean, look at the, the, the lack of production really for given the resources that you have. I mean, if we look at, you know, ROI, return on investment in terms of championships and so forth, you know, yeah, they made the playoffs. Big, you know, all right, big deal. I mean, you know, so what? You should with that payroll and your resources. So there's, you know, I I would prefer to see a cataclysmic change. If if I were, we can't trade the owner. We we know you know that doesn't work in sports. Um, you know, but if I'm Hal Steinbrenner, and if I really had a passion and really questioned what his passion is, if it's you know it's just keeping you know making money, which the Yankees can continue to do because it's such an incredible brand. Um, but I would I would go big, and I, I know Cashman has another year. Um, you know, buy him out. I mean, you can afford it. Buy him out and say, hello, Theo. Theo Epstein, hello. Look at you know, you've already cemented your Hall of Fame rep- reputation with what you did in Boston, what you did in Chicago. How about come here now and, and revive this, you know, storied franchise? And here, I'm getting out of the way. You know, do what you feel you need to do. And even if it means breaking it down for, for a year of pain and so forth, go do it. Go do what you think you need to do and just, you know, clean house here. I mean, the farm director, um, you know, manager, whatever. Get rid of all of it, Mike, and, 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 and redo this thing because it's a mess. It is a mess. And it's not going to get better with this guy calling the shots. I'm sorry, it's not. You know, there's a big enough body of evidence to show that he has grossly underachieved. He's he's Bobby Cox and Earl Weaver of general managers, as far as I'm concerned. And you know, obviously, when you fail the way the Yankees have failed, and you have the expectations, and you have the payroll and all that, you know, fans immediately start playing GM. They immediately want changes. This is what, what you know, get rid of this guy, keep this person, blah, blah, blah. And there might not be a team in professional sports that gets the fans rolling like this, like the New York Yankee fans. I mean, they're a passionate bunch and they're pissed. I mean, this is an angry fan base right now. Um, right. Where I'm going with this, though, is you can demand all the changes that you want, but until Hal Steinbrenner wakes up, Scott... Nothing is going to change. Nothing from Cashman to I think they're going to bring Boone back. Uh, unbelievably yep. so, I think they are because they just that's he's the puppet. Yep. He bobbles his head towards Cashman. I'd love for Boone to say, "No, nah, thanks, I'm good. I, I've had enough of this." But um, you know, because he sucks, and I think maybe the job is is just not what he thought it was. Um, right. But you know, between Hal and Brian Cashman, and then Boone, and then all the way down through the minor leagues, whatever is left of them. The scouting, they don't teach things. They can't move runners over. There's not situational hitting. Look at all the times they got caught at home this year. The play where Phil Nevin sent Judge home. All of those things, 
nothing's going to change. Instructional leagues, they don't even exist anymore. You know, the analytic crap, all that stuff, it's not going to change until the owner now says, I've had enough. I, I, I got to get a little bit of, I got to get a little bit of feeling like my dad had. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I mean, and I, I mean, again, just from an outside observer, I just don't see the passion from the guy, you know, that, it, that his old man had. Yeah. Now, I, I don't want the old man, I, you know, like, I mean, and he kind of addressed that, you yeah. know, like, remember, like, in the, in the season, he was talking about, like, well, you know, we keep, you know, changing people, for, you know, does that do any good, necessarily? Well, you know, it could if you get the right person there. Um, you know, like, I, again, I, I, we, you want to look at the model franchise, you know, look at Tampa. <laughs> I mean, compared to the Yankees, like, you want to return on your investment? Look at that place with that mausoleum of a ballpark. Um, with, with a, you know, a, 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 like a paltry payroll and revenue stream that, you know, you, you get to deal with down there and so forth. And year after year after year, I mean, <laughs> they do so much more with so much less than the Yankees do, you know? So, um, you know, this is a time, this would be a time when you got to go big and you, and look at Hale doesn't seem to be a meddlesome guy like his dad was. That's fine. Get Theo Epstein. Get somebody in who knows what the heck they're doing. And say, like, here again, you know, Theo, you know, this is yours. I'm getting out of the way. Go do it. Go do what you have to do. And 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 let's let's get this thing right. You know, um, uh, you know, so again, it's just uh it, it's a mess right now, and I don't see any quick solutions, you know. They, they, Stan. Look, at, I, I'm not going to rag on Stanton. He had a really good year for them, and and uh, and so forth. But again, they're saddled by that contract, um, you know. And now, now, Mike Garrett Cole. I was. Yep. What do you got in him? Yep. I mean, you got another onerous contract here that return on investment. Like, I mean, I I hope that this was just because he was playing hurt. He was pitching hurt with that hamstring. I really hope that's what that was. Um, I hope it's not spider tack. You know, <laughs> I hope it's not, well, now he no longer has the spin, you know, and stuff. I really hope it's not that. And, you know, and, and we'll find out, but, uh, you know, now you're back to like, you don't have, you don't have an ace. Um, you know, I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I thought, you know, I thought Jordan Montgomery pitched much, much better than any of his stats indicated, and the poor guy could have sued for non-support, uh, you know, with, with the, the the horrible offense that the Yankees have. But, um, yeah, I mean, what do you have? And, and you touched on a point that we've talked about before in terms of, um, you know, where's the development of these guys? Where is the scouting, you know, identifying – you know, prospects and stuff. And where is the development? Where is the teaching uh, of these guys? I just don't see that in this organization. I mean, like, you know, when is it? You know, like other other teams, like, can put a young player up there and they perform. Yeah. You know, why why can't the Yankees get that guy? You know, I mean, you know, they've, they've got all these top prospects here. You know, like, uh, you know, Anthony Volpe, you know, a number one shortstop and stuff like Get these guys up here and play them. You know, get get them up here and play. I mean, they can't do any worse than you know Glaber Tor, uh, Torres at, at, at shortstop or whatever. Play the young guys. We'll grin and bear it. You know, get things right here um, and, and, and go from there. But again, like you say, it goes back to ownership. Like, you know, what do you want? You want to just keep making hand over fist money, which you can do. Uh, you know, even just just being here. You know this mediocrity where you just make the playoffs and stuff, but we know you're not going anywhere. So, as we've gone on talking, I, I kind of sometimes I look at this roster, sometimes I look at how things have happened, and I'm like, man, they need a lot of work. They need this. They need that. They, you know, they, obviously it's a lot of it comes down to the organizational philosophy, which then would right. bleed into what you're saying, getting the old school things back. You know, the, the development, the teaching, all of that, that also is anti-analytic, which, again, in, in the real terms of it, they're not going to go down that road. Um, they're not going to change. But when on the topic, at least, of change and what we would 
want to happen, I look at it like, wow, there's a ton of stuff. And then, and then I look at it and I go, well, wait a minute. This team <clears throat> still won. And I know it's not just about this. It's about so much more when you win 100 games in a year. Because it's easy to say that. Well, look at Aaron Boone's won 100. You know, you hear that stat all the time. Yeah. The Rays win 100 games yeah. this year. You can say that that's impressive because, hello, Tyler Glass now went down with Tommy John. They let Charlie Morton walk and they traded Blake Snell. They won 100 games. So that's a totally different argument. What I'm getting at, though, is that the Yankees still have won 100 games multiple times. They won 92 this year. If they had beaten the damn Orioles nine more times... They would have won the division. Like, yeah. there are problems we see. Like, it's Torres, it's this, it's that, it's the lineup, it's... Okay, but really, how many major changes need to be done for this roster, you know, in order to be a competitive, deep-run October type of team? I'm not sure it stretches past six or seven major changes. I don't think it's 10. I don't think it's 15. I think it's simple stuff, and I think it's just a couple of movements here, there, and maybe signing a couple of guys that make sense. Yeah, no, no, you're, you're right. I mean, you know, this, this isn't, you know, this isn't the Orioles. This isn't a team that, you know, uh, is going to lose more than 100 games, whatever. But there's some serious issues here, and there's guys on the decline and there's people that you're not going to get much for, but I, I you know, I, 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 first off, you know, I know it's easier said than done to find a catcher, but give me somebody who can catch the ball and call a game or whatever and bat 240. Is that asking too much? 240, 250, go out and find somebody to do that and move on from Sanchez. He's, he's a, such a liability behind the plate. We should have known something when Garrett Cole early on, like, I don't, I don't want that guy catching for me. That should have been another sign, like, the guy can't call a game either. Um, you know, so let, let's move on from there, like, and get somebody, I don't care if it's 10, 15 home runs, but if, if he's a good receiver, a good backstop, and his knowledge, you know, I mean, that, you know, that hurts them here and there, you know. Um, and I know you're not going to get much, like, you know, Sanchez, what, they're going to have to pay him $9 million oh, if they, if they, up, like, move on. Yep. Okay, we've seen enough. Yeah. Move on. Um you know, like maybe, maybe they get lucky, and maybe Severino, you know, from the get go next year is back to being, you know, Sevy, or or at least a guy who can win twelve games or whatever, you know, and that that certainly would help. And I think Montgomery will continue to get better. Um, you know, again, Cole is a, a big issue, but what are you going to do? You know, you got seven more years. Seven more years. <laughs> seven more years, and again, you know. Tampa, because they can't, um, doesn't do these long-term contracts. You know, they, they may have to have to with Wander Franco there or whatever because he's such a, looks like a generational talent or whatever. But for the most part, and especially not with a pitcher, but see ya, you know, go, see ya. We, we, we found some more arms and stuff. So, you know, um, shortstop's an issue. Yep. Uh, what do you do? You know, do you... Well, we know that there's a bunch of guys out there. Yeah, I was going to say, do you break the bank for Corey Seager? Like, do you go get him? Do you go get Carlos Correa? Do you, I mean, do you deal with that contract on top of the Stanton contract, on top of the Cole contract, on top of what could be the Judge contract? I mean, do you do you go down that route to make the roster that much better? Because if you get a player of that caliber, you know, especially a Correa who, you know, look on the October stage and all he's he's fearless and he is he is yeah. a performer. And he's a big time right. five tool guy, and he's always healthy. So, right. if you had him, you could put Glaber at second, or you could even shop Glaber for that matter. But I don't think they're going to move him at all because we know again that's one of those things they just keep with these guys over and over. But now you go DJ Lemayhu. Hopefully, he's back and healthy. He wasn't anywhere what he was before, uh, you know, right. this year uh, in 2021. But if you have Lemayhu at first, Torres at second. You know, you have a more natural, gifted, great shortstop at, at short. You figure out third, whether that's Geo or somebody else. You wait for Volpe. I mean, that that's another thing. Like, if you go get one of these big shortstops, you're blocking yeah. Volpe as well. So, like, do, you know, do you want to just put the money in pitching, get rid of somebody else, go into the catching world? I mean, that I think that's the big thing there is you got to figure out, you know, if you're going to go all in on that shortstop, you got to look at some of the ramifications on the back end. Do you, would you go for one of those guys? Yeah, well, that's a great question, and I've I've been going back and forth on this, and I'm I'm of the mindset that I might be ready. I, I know, look at, I know that you know Anthony Volpe, uh, a number one pick, and was it Oswald uh, Peraza, 
you know, have two, they have two hot shot prospects at shortstop. I know that they, their development was impeded by not having a minor league season last year. I, I get that, and, and it's a legitimate concern or whatever. But I'm of the mind to, to start playing some of these guys. There was a guy, I'm not going to, you know, uh, damn these guys by comparing them to Derek Jeter, but Derek Jeter was fairly young, too, when, when you know, you got to take a chance. Yep. You know, the Yankees never yep. do. These other teams do. Yep. These they other do. teams do. They do. You know, and, you know, I mean, come on. Like, when are you going to take, you know, put them up there. Let them play. Um, you drafted them number one. You drafted these guys number one. Let's go. Uh, so, I don't know, you know, like, again, the Stanton thing, <laughs> we've talked about this before, the Stanton contract just, like, has ramifications and ripple effects on all these other decisions that you make. You know, and you're going to have to make a decision on Judge. Yep. Again, I, I think he's a great player, um, and thank God he was healthy. How will he age? He's a, he's a big guy. You know, um, he's athletic, but how is he going to age? You know, and he's probably going to age into a DH position. Well, you got Stan. There we go. You know, like, and here we go. Yeah, like I mean, you know, and we'll we'll, we'll move on. I think we agree. We'll move on from Luke Voigt. Oh, uh, gosh, they should have traded you know, him. And look at Gallegos. I kept trying to tell people the Yankees yeah. didn't win that trade outright. That kid can pitch. Right. He was a right. durable dude, a super long man. Yep. My God, when they lost Loisaga, Gallegos could have been that guy. I, I don't want Luke yep. Voigt. I don't want another power guy. Good Lord. Oh, and by the way, we haven't even added into the mix that you just uh, alluded to, Aaron frickin' Hicks. Oh, my gosh. There's oh, another geez, contract. Yeah. yeah, there's another contract. There's another guy. He'll get back. Mm. They'll play him. They'll play him. Here's how it's going to work, Mike. Get hurt They'll in May. It'll take, him, it'll take him three weeks. Yeah. No, first it's going to take him three weeks to get his timing down. There you go. Because yeah. it, it always happens. Yeah, always. And then he's, then he's going to tease us. That's right. He's going to go on a little bit of a tear and go, wow, that's this it. this kid's got talent. He's back. And he's going to get hurt. Yep, that's right. And he's going to get hurt. That's right. I mean, you know, there's a scenario. I hate to say it, but that's, that's oh, what happens. Gosh. That's his career. I mean, you know, and, you know, so... Yeah, there, there, there's issues there. But, but the other thing, too, is I think a real key for next season, uh, another one of these, like, you know, unknowns or whatever, is is DJ LeMahieu. Yeah. And let's not, um, you know, let, let's not underemphasize what, you know, the, the importance of him, you know, in this boomer bust lineup and the fact that he hit what? 60 points, 50 points lower than he had the, the two previous seasons. How, what an impact that had on the oh, team. Oh, big time. I mean, is that five, five, six games? Maybe? You Maybe, know, yeah, yeah. Food. I mean, when you think about the, when you think about the production, especially with guys on base. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, that guy was like, he was lights out guys on base. He was Ted Williams. Yeah. You know? The machine. I mean, That's and, why they call him the yeah. machine. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I don't know if he was hurt. I don't know what was going on. Um, but man, uh, you know, it, he just, that, that really, really hurt this team. They really needed him again because of their overemphasis on boomer bust, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and all the strikeouts this team. I mean, I, I was looking back, they, they had something like, I think close to six guys with a hundred strikeouts. And I know, oh, you know, here I am, the old school guy, right? Like, oh, Scott, that doesn't matter. Yeah, it does matter. And even the teams that rely on analytics, you know, they don't screw it up the way the Yankees do. Yeah. You know, there are, they, you, you've got to have some guys who can have base. You know, the, the, the whole, it used to be, Mike, the, you know, the Earl Weaver philosophy. I'm, I'm playing for the three-run homer. The Yankees play for the solo homer. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's right. And it doesn't work. No. Nope. It doesn't work. It's, it's, like, it's like playing <laughs> basketball today. Like, I'm just playing for two points. Guys, it's a three-point game now. It's a three-point game. You better get with it. Do the math, okay? So, yeah, uh, um, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I, the shortstop issue is a real, real tough one for me because, like, you know, are you going to go long? Because you're going to, look at you're going to have to with any of these, like, guys. And even if you went, like, Marcus Simeon, you know, this guy who, like, you know, wow, uh, you know, what he what he did, you know, with Toronto, and again, he you know he played second base for them. But if you if you move him, you put him at short or whatever, and you get that kind of production. Of course, he comes to the Yanks and he'll hit 
He'll hit 15. I was just going to say he won't do anywhere near because the Yankees get these guys and they do it late. They they don't do anything. You know, everything that happened before, it doesn't happen again with the Yankees. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, you know, they pick up guys like like Joey Gallo, who obviously is another guy who can't play in New York. Yeah. 200 Um, strikeouts, too, by the way, there. Right, right. You know, so, yeah, so, so I don't know. I, I, you know, I'm almost willing, um, I, I, you're going to have to settle the judge thing first, I yep, think. Yep. And hopefully he's going to be somewhat reasonable. But if he's looking for Mookie Betts, you know, type contract, I, he may, he may have to see him, you know, or, or we're going to deal him now someplace, you know. And I, and I know that, see, that's a real tough one, Mike, because he's extremely popular. Sure. He is, he is the face of the Yankees, okay? And, and he's, he, and he, you know, his jersey sales and everything else. You know, and, and he wants to be here. Well, you're going to have to work now because the economics of the game have changed and the economics of this team have changed, you know. But um, I, I'll just go back to I don't trust the guy making the decisions, okay? And um, he is, I have no faith in him. He hasn't given me any reason to think that he's going to build a championship team because he hasn't. He's got one ring. I know he got the others, but let's let's be honest. It's Gene Stick Michael and Bob Watson and Joe Torrey that were the masterminds behind all that, not not Brian Cashman, okay? Um, so I, I don't know. You know, like, it'll be interesting with the pitching. Um, you know, like, what are you going to do there? We talked about this before the season. Here they go. They have Garrett Cole, and we thought, like, yeah, okay, you can depend on him. Well, you know, that kind of faded toward the end. They, had, they were going on, on, a, on hopes and dreams. You know, with Kluber, you know, with with, with Tyon, um, come on, you're rolling the dice there. Like, if you got something, wow, damage goods. You know, like, yep. You know, yeah. You awesome. know, so again, hopefully Severino comes back. You got to hope. And um, I don't know. You you know, we can say, like, wow, they need to go get more pitching. Well, you're gonna spend more money and overspend and, oh. and overextend contracts. Oh, you're gonna go for Robbie Ray. You know, you, what are you going to have to, you know, you're going to have to overspend, right? But again, they should have gotten Robbie Ray a couple of years ago. I mean, you know, like he, they should have gotten him for the middle of the rotate. There's so many guys they should have already gotten by now. I mean, Garrett Cole, for crying out loud, they should have gotten. Right. They wouldn't give up uh, uh, Andujar with Clint Frazier for Garrett Cole, and now they've got Garrett Cole for seven more years at $36 million a year. You know, and, and right. he's and he's and he's bowing out in the postseason, which is why you got him, because you needed an right. ace. You would have you, had a ring. You would have had a ring Absolutely. already. Absolutely, you, you made know, that move with Cole. Yes, a couple years ago. Or, or even at the eleventh. Yeah, or even at the eleventh hour, do anything and everything possible to beat out Houston and go get Verlander. Like, right. you know, it's like, oh well, right. everybody asks the Yankees for more prospects than everybody else. Okay, well, if you're that one guy away, which they're not that now, clearly, but they they right. used to be, they were, which we were talking about. Well, right. at that moment, then give up the prospects. So you're getting a Hall of Fame first ballot dude who's shoving it up the other teams you-know-what every single October. Then go get them. Like, they get everybody late. And you mentioned, you know, taking a chance on some guys in the minor leagues. I couldn't agree with you more. And the Dodgers, I have to bring this into the conversation, and then we'll talk mm-hmm. Hall of Fame and Jeter, and then I'll, I'll let you get out of here. But the, the, the thing is, the Dodgers, even with that payroll, even with all those big money guys, they brought in Trevor Bauer, he goes out with the off-the-field stuff. They don't miss a beat. They win the one-game playoff. They win the World Series last year. They sign Mookie Betts. They've got Bellinger. They've got all these guys. You know, They bring in Albert Pujols after the Angels cut him. Guess what they've also done? In the past couple of years, Scott, they took a chance on a 21- or 20-year-old Gavin Lux. And remember, he was an impact guy. They took a chance on Will Smith at 23, 24. Hey, we want you to be our primary catcher. Those things right there, those are little things where you take a chance on young guys to supplement the rest of your roster. The Yankees need to do that. The Dodgers have done that despite all these big time guys, all these Hall of Famers, all these contracts, all the you know, huge payroll. They've taken chances on youngsters. Right, right. And again, we're assuming that the Yankees are teaching and developing these guys, and it's probably a big assumption. They're on not. Our part. You know, we're, we're hoping that, you know, Volpe or, you know, Peraza 
or the what the eighteen year old. They don't do Dominican shit with Republic. these guys because they're teaching yeah. them the analytics. Look at Torres. Torres used to be fundamentally sound and all that. Now he's just launch angle in it. Now the guy hits nine home runs and they threw him at shortstop for the majority of the year. They don't teach. They just yeah. they screw everything up. Yeah. No. No. You're right, and that's why I say like even you know other teams like if we can rag on analytics, and I think it's a it's a you know there's obviously positives about it, but you got to do it right. Yeah. You know. Yep. <laughs> and they don't and. Um, you know, and, and we even, t- you know, you, you mentioned, yeah, I think Boone's coming back because Boone is just a conduit. He's like, well, you know, he's a yes man and whatever. If you really, another thing, if you really wanted to improve this team, you got to change the manager and you got to let the guy manage. Now, again, I'm going in the face of analytics, right? Or whatever. But you can get guys who can manage and, and embrace, sure. you know, some of the analytics. I mean, we've seen guys like, you know, these are human beings you're dealing with here. And, you know, so so I would love to see David Cohn. Cohn's not going to take that. No and way. I would lo- I'd, I'd love to see Buck Showalter. And, Bochi. Uh, you know, Bochi. Um, I, would even, I would even give a chance on a guy who has was going to be a manager and then, like, you know, you know, the stuff hit the fan, Carlos Beltran. Huh, um, interesting. You know, I... I mean, I, w- I would, I mean, you know, here's here's a guy, like, who was beloved, and, and he got caught up in that scandal, yes. You know, but Cora did too, right? Yeah. You know, and, and, and um, I think, you know, I, I, I think you, you've got a lot of, you know, Latin American players. They're, they're dominant players in the game of baseball now. You better be able to communicate. Yep. And, you know, and, and, and stuff. So, I mean, I would even take a flyer. But, you know, you <laughs> It's not going to change. I try to tell Yankee fans, like, oh, you know, I get heard all your fire boom, blah, 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 blah. And, and again, I'm not defending Boone. I, I, you know, I'd like to see them move on or whatever. But I also realize here's the way the game is played today. Yep. And it's Brian Cashman and it's the analytics department. They are, you know, calling down. You know, like they're telling you beforehand, here's your lineup. Here's what you're going to do, you know, and so the manager is hamstrung. So, I, you know, I, I, again, you know, David Cohn, Buck Showalter, all these guys, Bochy, these guys, I think would, you know, make a, a difference. They would make a big difference because they embrace the analytics, but they're also like they understand the human element of the game. And, of course, Cohn would understand pitching changes yep. and what's going on. He could help out there. Um but you know they're not they're not going to walk into a situation where their their success and failure is based on you know a guy who uh, you know has called all the shots up you know and, and has has been under an underachiever a big time underachiever in, in Brian Cashman. No so, doubt, no doubt. Long time columnist and uh, author Scott Petoniak uh, with us here on the ML Sports Platter at Scott Petoniak on Twitter. Get his work in the Rochester Business Journal and. Online where books are sold in your nearby bookstores. Go pick up all of his baseball books uh, and, and other books. Memories of Yankee Stadium, Let's Go Yankees, a children's book, of course. And uh, the most recent one, Remembrances of Swings Past, all available uh, online where books are sold. Just in the couple minutes I have with you, Scott, left. Um, September 8th, we got it in. It was a special day. It wasn't like it normally would have been, but we got it right. in. The induction class, uh, it was there. The speeches were awesome. Our guy, Derek Jeter, went in. Uh, give just kind of your recap on this whole thing. And, man, when all those videos were going up there on the 90s Yankees and Jeter and <laughs> Mo and Pet- and uh, how many times did you and I and Matt Michael just look at each other and just put our hands up and, and down and go, man, I miss this group, you know? I mean, I, I, yeah. I was almost brought to tears watching those guys because of what they mean to, to me, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you know, I, I think I told you, Mike, like if you're going to be a Yankee fan right now, it's okay to live in the past because it's a lot. It's a lot better to be there than to be to be in the future or, or to be in the present. I should say because you know of what's going on. I mean, it, to me, you want you want a highlight of the Yankee season. It was that day. It was that day. It was a reminder of what this franchise was was about and what it could be again. Um, you know, if if you if, you know again, we're not going to see. You know that that group, the the core five. Because let's, let's, you know, they keep forgetting Bernie. Come on, I know it came up earlier and stuff, but 
you know, a core five. You're just not going to see that again. And again, uh, you know, you had you had better leadership uh, back then. You know, you know, Tory uh, was still managing human beings. You know, knew knew the right moves and stuff like uh, without analytics, without a folder. And and you had you know Stick Michael and and, and you had Bob Watson. I mean, it was just a great organization. And so it was a painful reminder of that. But it was also, yeah, it was a great moment. Um, you know, Jeter, Jeter, uh, you know, is, he was the face of that. And, um, and it's amazing to me, like, just how many incredible moments he was involved in. Um, you know, and uh, he rose to the occasion. You know, he was, he, he was, uh, he was he was the glue that held all that together, yep. and it was an amazing amazing group of guys. And so, to relive that was a lot of fun. Um, and you know he you know he he delivered a, he delivered <laughs> as we would expect. You know <laughs> in his his moment of glory, he delivered once again. Um, you know again it wasn't you know Lou Gehrig's you know luckiest man on the face of the earth or this and that, but it was just it 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 hit all the right notes. And just as Derek Jeter's career hit all the right notes on and off the field. So it was a special, special day. I'm glad it happened. We really didn't think it was going to happen. Uh, and I'm glad that, that, you know, the Hall of Fame, like, rethought that and yes. said, like, okay, you know, you know, yeah, it, it would have been great if it was when it was supposed to be. There would have been 100,000 people, you know, crowding that little wonderful village of, of Cooperstown, New York, you know. But – as it was, it was uh, a special, special time, and and to be, you know, be with you and Matt Michael and and, and Rocco Carbone and stuff like, it's kind of like our we we miss that. It's yeah, it's been, uh, yep. been a couple of years. You know? Yeah, it was so much fun. Well, get his work uh, rbj.net, of course, at Scott Petoniak on Twitter, the longtime columnist and uh, sports reporter, TV contributor, and more. And please do go pick up all of his books online where books are sold. Uh, and your nearby bookstores as well, including Memories of Yankee Stadium, Let's Go Yankees, uh, a children's book, and of course, Remembrances of Swings Past. Scott, I knew it would be fun. I knew it would be, uh, obviously, we're sharing it in the frustration together, but uh, always love having you on. Knew you'd knock it out of the park, and uh, we'll do it again soon, my friend. Thank you so much. Thanks, my friend. It's always always fun. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Better days will come. And the ML Sports Platter is brought to you by Barks and Rec. Doggy Daycare, Rosie's Corner, Welch and Company Jewelers, and our terrific, terrific friends over at Axe Exotic Pets. Let me tell you something. Lizards, snakes, birds. Oh my goodness. This place is incredible. They've got every exotic pet you could possibly imagine. All the amenities, aquariums and cages and more. Route 11 and Cicero, if you're in and around central New York, get on over to Axe Exotic Pets. A big tip of the cap. Thank you as well to Ken's Auto Detailing, Camilla's Golf Club, and the Swan and Whitaker families. Big time tip of the cap. Thanks to Scott Petoniak as well, talking about the dreadful New York Yankees. Hit me on Twitter at Mike L Sports. And as I always tell you, enjoy the games. 